Hey guys, Woodruff here. Um, so I have a quick clarification on heart block treatments because I've had students um, who watch my videos ask me about this. So just wanted to clarify kind of um, where we're at when it comes to treatment. So this would not be a good video to learn about what heart blocks are, things like that. This is if you've already watched the other videos and you just wanted some summarizing clarifications. Um, so um, we cut effectively. Uh, what we've discovered is, is that, you know, um, heart blocks are progressive. So the, the least serious one is a first degree. The most serious one is the third degree. There's two types of second degrees. And then the treatment's going to differ, of course, based on that severity. So we talked about how in first degree, there's usually no treatment needed. Most people don't even know they have a first degree block. Unless it's symptomatic, we just watch it and kind of keep an eye. Um, most first degree blocks now I wouldn't say most, I would say some first degree blocks do eventually progress to more serious type of blocks, but not every type of block progresses. So um, sometimes a person can have a first degree the rest of their life. There's also um, second degree blocks. So there's type one and type two. Um, if a type, a second degree type one, and this is where students get confused, the degrees and then the type second degree type one, if they're symptomatic, um, then we'll treat it. Otherwise we just watch it. Cause this is kind of things are getting a little bit more serious, but not necessarily that they need treatment. So, um, I think of, um, DAPIT. So the DAP, the D and DAP is dopamine. Um, the A and DAP is for atropine and the P is for pacemaker. The primary treatment for most types of blocks is a pacemaker. Um, but um, for a second degree type one, we can still use atropine. This is the big reason I made this video is there's confusion around when to use atropine and when not to. Um, and I'm not going to say dopamine is going to be the first go to, but if it's very serious, again, it kind of depends on the cause, because the other thing to keep in mind is if someone's in a really bad heart block, I also need to treat the cause. Um, if the cause is some I've tried to reverse any possible cause and it's not there, like if they've had too many beta blockers, et cetera, and they're still in that they might have something going on with the heart itself um, and need further treatment or need a permanent pacemaker. But what I really want you to associate when you think about heart blocks is all about pacemaker because usually that's going to be one of the first line treatments. Now, in the meantime, I can't put a pacemaker at the bedside right here, right there. Um, so usually we do like a temporary pacemaker, transcutaneous, transvenous, things like that until they can get a permanent one placed. Um, in emergencies, we will use atropine for the second degree type one. Um, and again, if it's going to be a little bit before we can get them there and they're really having trouble keeping that heart rate up and getting good cardiac output, then we will usually start them on a dopamine drip or something along those lines. Um, so then this is where I just want to kind of differentiate. Once we get a pass to second degree type one, um, atropine is really not going to be effective. Um, atropine helps uh, when there is an, what do you call it? Um, it works on the AV node and helps with um, AV node dysfunction. Um, so it can work to a certain extent, um, but once we get to a second degree type two, there's really um, starting to be a loss of talk um, talking or communication from the top of the heart to the bottom of the heart. Um, so atropine is really not going to be effective. So I really just want you to think of like, you know, if there was a symptomatic first degree or second degree type one, we may use atropine. But after that second degree type two, third degree, we are not going to use atropine. Um, you know, so I think in my previous videos, I may have stated that they, we're never going to use atropine for any blocks, but um, we can use it for some. We're just, we don't, it's not usually like our first go-to because again, a lot of times people with this dysfunction, um, like their AV node is all messed up. And so a lot of times it's not very effective, but we can use it in a first degree or second degree type one, just not in a second degree type two or a third degree. So um, hopefully this pyramid kind of helps um, read to see. So once I get to a second degree type two, they're, they're most likely going to need treatment. Most people are not just chilling and we're just watching them at this level. Um, they're usually getting a temporary, they have a temporary pacemaker in or a transcutaneous or transvenous pacemaker. We're preparing to put in a permanent pacemaker and they may be on dopamine um, or something until they can get, um, you know, because atropine is very short. Think of it like a Band-Aid. So kind of think of it like when you learned about epinephrine and anaphylaxis, how you can take that epinephrine, but but, you know, your throat can keep swelling. So you might need repeated doses. Atropine is the same thing. Atropine will work for a period of time, a short period of time, but it's not going to be like, long term going to always keep your heart rate up. It's just a band-aid. If you don't solve the underlying issue or if they really need a pacemaker at the end of the day, you're going to be given like regular atropine. So a lot of times that's where they end up putting them on a drip like dopamine. Um, in third degree, that's serious business. Um, there is no way around it. They're going to, um, there's no atropine. 
um, because it's not going to work because it's complete dissociation from the top of the heart to the bottom of the heart. They're going to need something to get their heart speeding up faster, like a pacemaker. In the meantime, we'll usually have them on something like dopamine. And sometimes we even use epinephrine drips um, to keep their heart rate up until we can get them the solution for their problem, which is a pacemaker. So big picture here, pacemaker is um, a lot of times the ultimate solution for a lot of these patients, not all of them, but a lot of them are going to end up needing a pacemaker when they have these um, long term blocks. Um, and um, in the meantime, for the very serious blocks, we'll use drips like dopamine or epinephrine. Um, the more serious blocks, that's the second degree type two, third degree, no atropine, whereas the less serious blocks, first degree or second degree type one, atropine can sometimes be effective. Um, but at the end of the day, we really need to get to the root cause, what's causing this block. If we can reverse it, reverse it. If we can't, let's get them a pacemaker. Anyway, hope this clarified things. See you for the next one.